Hey there and welcome back. This is Felix from Goldamer Vintage Watches. Today we are diving into the world of luminous materials on watch dials. Imagine you're out on a hike deep in the wilderness, the sun has set and the only light is the stars above. You reach out for your watch to check the time and with simple glance, the luminous scent hands and markers jump out at you clear as day. That's the magic of luminous scent materials. But about a hundred years ago, it looked quite different because electricity was not that widespread and the clever minds of the time had to come up with something to be able to read the watch in the dark as well, especially in the time of the First World War. So in this video, we're going to explore it all, from the vintage radium and tritium watches of the yesteryear to the cutting edge technology of today. How to indicate them and we explain if it is really dangerous to wear watches with radioactive loom. The evolution of these glowing substances has played a crucial role in the history of horology. But as we all know, not all of these materials are the same. Some are safer, some are brighter, and some are just plain cooler. So sit back, relax, and join us as we shed some light on the world of luminescent watch dials. First of all, we must briefly discuss what radioactivity actually is. Simply put, radioactivity is a property of a substance. Everything around us is made of atoms or molecules. Plants, animals, people, the earth, the air, even the sun. Normally an atom is stable. It stays the way it is. But in some kinds of atoms, the nucleus can collapse. This releases high energy rays that cannot be seen, heard or felt. In 1898, Pierre Marie Curie discovered radium. Radioactivity was new and exciting. They had no idea that it was potentially dangerous. People thought it was healthy and it was included as an ingredient in many products. So those products even included X-ray soap, radium butter for your breakfast, and even germ toothpaste. Erzeugt im Munde natürliche Frische means something like creates natural freshness in the mouth. Simply unbelievable. Well, enough from the basics. Let's move on to how radium get from the toothpaste to our watches. In the early days of watchmaking, watches were primarily used during the day and were not expected to be legible at night. This changed when watchmakers simply discovered that they could mix the radium with paint to create a paint that glows in the dark. Radium itself only glows weakly. But this change, if it's combined with a fluorescent substance in radio luminescent colors. When this mixture was freshly applied, it did not require an external energy source as it has enough of its own energy due to the radium ingredients. These properties make this material the perfect choice for many watches built during the First World War. These self-glowing pieces called trench watches had luminous faces for reading in the dark trenches along both sides of the battlefield and often featured big bold numerals and hands to maximize the radium surface area. The watches were relatively safe for the wearer as the most radiation emitted by radium into the air is only a few centimeters and is contained by the watch case itself. But how did the radium get onto the watches? The use of radium in watch dials was particularly popular among women, the so-called radium girls, who were employed as dial painters to paint tiny numbers and hands on watch faces. These women would often use their mouths to shape the paintbrushes, ingesting small amounts of radium in their mouths. Unfortunately, the long-term health effects of radium exposure were not yet known and many of the dial painters developed serious health problems, including bone fractures, cancer and anemia. The dangers of radium first became known in the 1920s when several radium girls died from radium-related illness. Despite their illness, the factory owners and the US government denied any connection between the radium and the woman's symptoms. It was not until five of the radium girls, who became known as the radium dial painters, filed suit against their employer that the truth about the dangers of radium came to light. Nevertheless, radium became more popular in the following years and almost every watch between 1917 and the early 1970s used a form of radium paint. So now the question raised, is it safe to wear a watch with radium loom or not? Scare stories about radium, radioactivity and possible dangers are circulating all over the internet. Is radium loom really that dangerous or is scaremongering? Well, the use of radium was discontinued in the early 1960s. 
and for good reasons. There are two basic problems with radium paint. First, it's chemically unstable and second, it poses a radiological danger. In addition to the risks associated with radium itself, radium decays into a gas, radon gas. This gas from radium watches can, under certain circumstances, accumulate to potentially dangerous levels. And so the all too familiar statements like don't lick the dial and absolutely nothing can happen to you are not entirely true. But it is also not as life-threatening as many claim. Not a single factory worker became ill after wearing protective gear and stopping to lick the paintbrush. The dose when wearing a radium watch is very small. Radium emits primarily alpha particles, which have a very short range. They cannot penetrate tissue paper and will not pass through a watch case. Some gamma particles are also emitted, but the biological effect is about 20 times less. Also, the dose is often measured from the watch glass, but your arm is on the other side. So the relevant dose is the one at the bottom of the case. If you take into account the rapid decrease in dose with distance and the shielding provided by the dial, case back and movement, the dose would be reduced even further. Combined with the high radiation resistance of your skin, hands, arms, the effective dose is below the legal requirements for the public, which are extremely conservative and far below the levels at which damage would be done. The highest risk is inhalation or swallowing of radium, as the alpha particles are toxic to the body. Furthermore, radium watches should be stored in ventilated areas to avoid the accumulation of the radon gas mentioned earlier. In conclusion, we can say be careful with radium watches, but there is no reason to be afraid. So this leads us directly to the next important question. Is my vintage watch even radioactive? And how can I find out? If you have a Geiger count at hand, this is of course the easiest way to detect radioactive emissions. To use a Geiger counter on vintage watches, follow these steps. First, just turn on the Geiger counter and hold it close to the watch. Depending on the elevation and type of Geiger counter, a typical natural background radiation level is anywhere from 5 to 20 counts per minute or more. You hear a clicking sound as soon as you turn on the speaker because there's always some radiation in the background. This radiation comes from the sun, natural uranium in the soil, radon gas, certain types of rocks such as granite, plants and foods, and even other people and animals. Just take a watch you want to test and listen for the clicks or beeps emitted by the Geiger counter, which indicate the presence of radioactive material. If you don't bother to buy a Geiger counter, the text on the face of your watch can tell you in the most cases the level of radioactivity at the time when it was made. The term Swiss on the dial means it was made in Switzerland. If it has luminous markers and made prior to the 1960s, then the watch most likely has radium. After 1998, watches may have Swiss or Swiss made on the dial. However, by this time, Luminova was used instead of radium. In the early 1960s, the letter R or RA was added standing for radium until it was phased out and replaced by less dangerous alternatives such as tritium or superluminova. The usage of radium material was in the 1960s greatly scaled back. By the 1960s, the amount of radium used in watch dials was approximately 100 the amount used in the early 20s. Radium retains its fluorescence for a long time, and many radium dials may still have a charge in them. They tend to burn over time, turning the hands, hour markers, or even the dial to a dull brown. The letter T indicates that tritium was used at opposed to radium. Tritium, also introduced in the early 1960s, had replaced radium in watches largely by the end of the 1960s. And although still radioactive and potentially dangerous, the beta particles are not able to escape through the watch glass or skin. Both tritium and promethium are radionuclides, but emit much lower levels of radiation than radium. With promethium's relatively short useful lifespan, it was replaced by tritium. With the introduction of tritium came the new markings on the dial with a T, added to the watch dials in around 1963. If you find the term Swiss T on your dial, this means the watch was made in Switzerland and was less than 5.0 MCI. MCI is a millicurie, a unit of measuring radioactivity. T, Swiss T, means also Swiss made, 
contains tritium and emits less than 7.5 MCI. Swiss tea under 25 is completely the same but with less than 25.0 MCI. The term PM stands for promethium, but it can also be designated by only a P or a PM 0.5. The term L, Swiss L, is an optional marking indicating that the lume is photoluminescent due to the excitation of light radiation as opposed to radioluminescent, which is due to the radioactivity of the material. Tritium, however, is significantly less radioactive than radium, meaning it was safe enough to be painted onto watch dials for decades until the 1990s, when a couple of even safer alternatives like Luminova and Superluminova, still used today, took its place. The most popular Lumis material used in watches today is Super Luminova, like you can see it on this Rolex Air King. In this process, the pigments are brought to a higher energy level through contact with artificial light or daylight. The more complete the stimulation, the brighter the subsequent glow. This non-toxic, non-radioactive material is highly efficient and long-lasting, making it the perfect choice for watches in general. A watch with Superluminova is easy to spot because it glows in a greenish-blue tone by absorbing light, then re-emitting light. The disadvantage compared to radioactive material is the persistence of the glow in the absence of light. The glows usually last only about 7 hours in the dark. The Swiss brand Superluminova, founded in the early 1990s, brought the method into the mainstream and is now one of the largest suppliers, although some watch manufacturers such as Zyko and Rolex produce their own variants. The type of luminous material used on a vintage watch can provide information about the watch's age and manufacturer. If a vintage watch is found to have radium-based lume, it can be an indication that the watch was made before the 1960s. If it has tritium, it indicates that the watch was produced after the 1960s until the mid 1990s. Furthermore, with the help of fluorescent surfaces on dials, you can wonderfully check the originality of a vintage watch. Use a magnifying glass with UV light and illuminate the dial for a short moment. When radium is illuminated with UV, the loom slowly glows and only slowly disappears when the light source is removed. Tritium, on the other hand, pops up very quickly and disappears again quickly. Superluminova also pops up super fast but keeps the glow for a longer time. With this info you can determine the loom of your watch with the help of only UV light. Then check if the color of the hands and the hour markers match or if they differ in luminosity or color. Just look at the color of the hand of this universal Genève Compur. We can clearly see that the hands shine much brighter and in a different tone than the numerals. In this case, the numerals have retained the original luminosity and the hands have been relumed. If there are differences, this is a clear sign that this watch has been refinished. Either the hands have been replaced, the dial or the luminous material is simply no longer in its original condition. So in conclusion, even though the development and progress of Luminova and Superluminova have found a way to use luminescent material on the dial that are harmless to humans, the discussion about the advantages and disadvantages compared to tritium watches remain alive. The quick reduction in the brightness of Luminova coatings, as well as the material sensitivity to moisture, are still the main criticism voiced by many watch enthusiasts. In contrast, tritium has a long half-life, ensuring a consistently high level of continuous light. In addition, the patina and color change toning of the indices is considered an additional beauty value, which is still appreciated by collectors today. In addition, of course, no more treats and watches are produced, which increases the rarity value. For us, these timepieces are not only beautiful and unique, but also a piece of history. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about this fascinating topic. So have a great day and hope to see you in our next video.